been getting a ton of requests to talk about the new iPhone 10, the iPhone X, so I thought I'd make a quick video sharing with you some of what I, I like and some of what I don't like about this phone. If you don't feel like watching the whole video, long story short, I really like this thing. I, I'm more of an Android guy than I am an iPhone guy, but I've always carried an iPhone and an Android phone. 10 years ago, I slept on the street to be the first person to get the iPhone 1 when it came out. First yeah, iPhone in America. First one in America. But then a few months later, I was also the first person to get the HTC G1, which was the first ever Android phone to come out. So uh, I'm just kind of a phone nerd. My main phone is a Samsung Note 8. I also work for Samsung, so take that for what it's worth. And I, I, I do want to talk about this just to draw contrast with different features on the iPhone 8. Okay. Chapter one, form factor. The X feels different. This is a six or a seven. This is the 5S. This is a six. They have this kind of, I don't know, they, but there's something about the glass and metal sandwich here and the weight of this. It, it feels, feels really good in the hand. Now on the back of this glass sandwich, there is this gigantic camera protrusion. And it's hard to say without holding it just how significant it is. Previous iPhone designs have this kind of swoop or this little metal ring here. On the Galaxy, it's perfectly flush. But on this, they chose to make it this big, fat, like you could, you could like shave with this thing. It doesn't feel like they're trying to hide it. It's like they're owning the fact that this thing's got a protrusion. If you can't make it perfectly beautiful and flush like it is on the Galaxy or on the old iPhones, the next best thing is just to own it. It feels very industrial. Now, they call this thing all screen, and it sort of is besides the, uh, I like that there's no more button down here, but I will say I was out shooting the other day trying to use this with my drone, and the whole phone crashed. And because there was no physical home button, the DJI app crashed, and there's no way for me to crash this app to get back to the home screen because there's no home screen button. So nothing I do can get it, can lock the phone and then unlock the phone and face ID it open, okay, and then we're back here. Now, if this were the old iPhone, I could just double tap, but no, I'm completely stuck. The only other hardware thing to talk about is the, uh, the lack of iPhone jack. Now, that's been gone for a couple of years, so I, I can't really bitch about it anymore, but it still sucks. It sucks as much now as it did before. I really like a headphone jack, and I know the new Pixel doesn't have a headphone jack. Samsung, please, please don't take away the headphone jack. Face ID, the killer app, the thing everybody's been talking about, it's good. It's way better than I expected. When it works, it's like it's not even locked, it just magically opens when it works. Because I wear sunglasses 21 hours a day, it doesn't work when I try it with sunglasses on. It just doesn't. So it gives me sort of two options. I can go like this, or I gotta wait for it to fail, and then I just punch in my key code circa 2011. It's fine. I do wish there was a redundant measure there. Uh, on my main phone, on my Note, it has a, a retinal scanner, which works similarly. I use the retinal scanner if I've got glasses off. If I've got glasses on, I just put a finger down there and it unlocks. I would love another mechanism to unlock this thing besides Face ID and besides this key code. And to get really specific, it does this thing where it tries to unlock with Face ID and there's about a two second wait before the keypad comes up. So that means two seconds of waiting before I can actually punch in my code and unlock it. That sounds like a small deal, but I mean, you know, I lock my phone like 500 times a day it gets a little annoying. Other things that I really like that I didn't think I would like, the gesture input on this. That is the, the closing of apps by swiping up and, and pulling down on the corner to bring up your control panel and pulling down over here to bring up notifications. It feels like a much more human interaction than maybe like tapping these virtual buttons. And it works in a way that, that after you know 36 hours became really intuitive. One gripe I have with the swiping interaction is that to bring up the multitasking, to bring up all the, the window panes like this, it's a little awkward. You have, to, you have to swipe up and then hold your finger there for them to appear. And then if you wanted to shut down all these apps at once, you have to kind of hold down and wait for this thing to come up. It's fine, we're talking about seconds of lag here, but the way it worked on the the way it works on Android where you tap a button and you can swipe through to me feels like, uh, it, it feels more efficient. This feels like I'm, I'm holding and waiting. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Now I could make like a two hour long video about Android versus iOS. I don't wanna go too far down that bottomless hole pit right now, 
but there are a couple things that really stand out here. For starters, the notifications. If you think, you know, your phone as a communication device, understanding all these communications that are coming in across all of these different apps, being able to organize those and process those in your head is maybe the most important part, the most important part of your relationship with your phone. Now, Android, which has a lot of faults, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of that Android does that I just don't understand. Android's notification system, I think, is near perfect. Everything's right there, it's, it's neatly organized. The most common interaction I do with my Android devices is just pull down from the top and I can literally see everything that's going on. Now, on iOS, and this, this is less an iPhone 10 thing as it is an iOS thing, like 60% of all these notifications are just, are just from my American Express card telling me that I had charges. Apple, why not group them all together? Why do I have to have 500 notifications from the same app? In the end, I have almost all of my notifications turned off on this thing because this notification display menu thing is just such a, a dumpster fire. And it's always been that way. Ever since on iOS, you pull down from the top, it's always been this big, fat, confusing mess. Uh, another thing that I would love to see on these devices, um, Apple did a really good job of doing multi-window, that is like having more than one app open on a single screen on the iPad, on the iPad Pro, it's great. There's a lot of real estate here. How about letting me have two apps open at once? Um, that's something that I use all the time on my, on my note. You're driving in your car, you got your maps open, but you also wanna watch the latest H3, H3 drop. You can have them both open here. Apple, why not do that too? You got plenty of real estate. Look at the size of that big juicy screen. Love to see multi-window. That really does impact the productivity of the mobile device. Yo, I don't think we should talk about this. And the last thing to touch on is the notch. When I was doing a little bit of research for this video, I, I read a bunch of online reviews. A lot of people said that, a lot of people said that the notch just kind of goes away, like you get used to it. I disagree. The notch never stops being annoying. It's like this, omnipresent thing that I looked down at this beautiful display and it feels, it, honestly, it feels like it's a mistake. Like it shouldn't be there, but they got nowhere else for it to go. It, it, the first thing I did when I got this phone was I, I, I changed out my background screen from that like beachy thing to all black. Now, if you look, the notch is gone and on either side is like your reception status and the time. It, it looks great. It looks like how it should be. I kind of wish that was implemented across the board. Like in every app, they kept it nice and black up there to hide the notch, just hide it with software. All right, so those are kind of my initial thoughts. Uh, end conclusion here, will the iPhone X replace my Note 8 as my main phone? No. Uh, you know, I've always like, this is a Sony Android phone here and this is an HTC Android phone. I've always found Android to be a better productivity device. The Note 8 with the stylus, the bigger screen, it's just a better computer in my pocket. I didn't talk about, I didn't talk about cameras or video cameras or the things that I, I imagine my audience really cares about. I wanna do a really exhaustive side-by-side -side camera test like where you can see the iPhone 10 against the Note 8. I'm gonna do that, but I didn't wanna like half-ass that by putting it in this video. So I'll make that video later. Okay, that's it. I hope you like my, um, I hope this 